Hi there, I'm Linda and this is Hutton's Valley Permaculture. I had my three swales dug in June of 2019 and I've been planting them out and performing chop and drop mulching ever since. In today's video, we're taking a look at the soil in my top swale. Will there be any difference in soil quality at my more managed end compared to the neglected end? That's what I'm hoping to find out. I'm often being asked questions about how things are going here on my permaculture property. Swales are certainly not the usual and growing support trees for chop and drop is also not quite the norm. Do these systems promote better and quicker growth of plants? It's just me here to do the work. Occasionally I'll have help with a few things, but most of the swale planting and maintenance is up to me. That means I can't do everything I'd like to do as quickly as I'd like to do it. So I have to choose my activities. What I have found is that I've managed one end of my top swale more intensely than the other end. In this end closest to my house, I've planted more trees and shrubs for production and more trees and shrubs as support. I've done a lot more chop and drop of the support trees and also a lot more chop and drop of the grasses. There are a lot of roots in the soil, even under my productive trees that I've heavily mulched. Compare this with the farthest end of my top swale. It's the end I visit and tend to the least. And you can see the support trees are much larger with large areas of bare soil, perhaps just with a little bit of leaf litter underneath them all. Has the difference in management of the two areas contributed to better soil down one end compared to the other, or is it much the same? I think my soil still needs a lot of work to allow the system to sail through a hot summer happily, regardless of which end we are looking at. Today, I'm gonna to get my spade out and into the berm, and we're gonna take a closer look at what's going on. The first spot I'm gonna take a sample from is under this huge big tagasasti. I have chopped it a couple of times, but not a lot. And just under the tree here, all this shaded area has produced this bare soil. Now, we've had a bit of rain, not as much as usual. Uh, there's no visible cracking at this stage and there's quite a bit of litter on the ground just from the tree. So we'll get the spade out and uh, we'll have a look and see what we can see in the soil. All right, let's just turn this over. So having a look at this, it looks to be quite a bit of clay, although it does break up. There is some moisture in there. There doesn't seem to be much in the way of life or roots from plants. It's the roots from plants that actually feed the soil and help promote its growth. So there's really not a lot in here. I'd say that's just a little root from the tree itself. So that's interesting. Just next to my big tagasasti, I have one of my productive trees. This is a mulberry that's been in the ground for four years. I planted it pretty much straight away. It is probably getting a bit too much shade from this adjacent tagasasti, so I'll have to um, chop that back and give this tree a little bit more sunshine. But I have used a lot of the tagasasti when I have done a little bit of chop and drop up here. I think, I think I've just done one big session on these trees once rather than kind of each year. And it was all put around this tree that's just coming to life now after winter. So if I can clear a space to get my spade into, there is a little bit more of these weedy species. This is a creeping buttercup that sort of grows in more moist areas. And I find that a lot in my swales. I'll get my spade into there and we have a look at the soil there. Pretty tough. It could be that there's roots there. Hang on, here we go. Oh, signs of life. And there's an earthworm that I've disturbed. And the colour is certainly darker and less clay than under the, the tagasasti that hasn't had any chop and drop at all. Sorry, Wormy. Let's just flip this over. A bit more in the way of plant roots in here. And the soil is definitely slightly different colour. We've got some little 
beetle larva too, I think. Yeah, and quite a bit more roots and certainly a lot more life in there to enjoy. Um, obviously the, the soil food webs are just sort of starting in there and that's what um, earthworms feed on, the bacteria in the soil. Okay, so that's interesting. That's um, sort of positive for my little mulberry tree. The third spot I wanted to investigate is just sort of underneath a really grassy spot, which will obviously have lots of roots in the soil, but this area hasn't had any of the mulching. A lot softer than underneath the tagafasti tree. I would say that's kind of halfway in between what we saw underneath the tagasasti tree, which would really dry out. It wouldn't get the same amount of moisture that these areas sort of out in the open would get. Here's a little earthworm. And my mulched mulberry tree would hold on to a lot more moisture as well. So there's lots more roots in there, as you'd expect with all the grasses. Some life, there was a, a beetle larva and an earthworm but it is quite a bit drier than underneath our mulberry tree. We're back down the house end of the swale where I've got my apricot guild and I've done chop and drop videos on this tree twice and I'll leave a link for both of those in the description. So we'll have a look under this tagasasti tree that is quite a bit smaller than the one down the other end and see what the soil's like. And then we might take a look under one of the apricot trees here that's got a lot of the mulch from this tree over a few years. You can see with the tree being smaller and the sunshine and moisture getting to it better, there's a lot more growth, which in terms of the soil is good because these plants actually feed sugars down to the soil microbiology and helps to build the soil. So I'm expecting under this tree will be slightly better than up the other end where it's totally shaded and dry. There is a little something crawling around there, quickly trying to hide, it's like a little centipede I think. The soil's not dry and it's not overly moist. We haven't had rain for a few days, but as you can see that there's lots of roots in there from the grasses. Might just do another bit of a dig. Here's our earthworm hiding away in there. So there's a certainly a little bit of more life in here than underneath the tagasasti tree. There's another little earthworm. So let's take a look under our apricot tree. My apricot tree is just starting to come to life and it does have a few apricots coming on it, not too many. Having a look around the base, you can see there's quite a lot of the chop and drop that we've done recently. What I usually do is just pile that up. The leaves dry out as they have here and that drops through to the soil surface. And slowly as the branches break down, um, they drop to the soil as well. Any that's on the soil and is moist, they sort of start to decompose with the um, fungi and that helps promote the soil. So we're gonna to have to dig through this uh, in order to get our spade into the soil and see what we find there. Certainly with a heavier mulch layer, um, it keeps the, the moisture in the ground better and then upon first glance, you can see that the soil is holding more moisture. So let's dig in and see what we find. Already I'm disturbing some soil life. Got a worm there and a slater. We've got another worm here. The soil certainly looks a lot more chocolatey brown. Now let's flip it. And there's another little worm making his escape. It looks to have more structure than under the tagasasti nearby. There's a little bug. I don't know what they are. Some sort of centipede maybe. And another one. The more diversity in your soil, the more indication that um, the health is coming. So there's more worms. Lots of worms actually, and it's quite easily broken up. And that's really cool to touch. Um, 
I'm not a soil scientist, so I don't really know how to evaluate these things. But uh, I'd say, given the colour, the moisture, and the life in that, then that soil is really heading in the right direction for helping provide nutrients for our apricot tree. We'll just kind of tuck it back in. I'll just grab some of these buttercup, which will cover the, the soil a bit more directly. And we'll get that down close to the ground. So you can see with a chop and drop, if you can get your material closer to the ground, then it holds more moisture in and the soil life love that. The third spot in this end of the swale that I wanted to check was also a grassy end. This is just below the peach tree. Now most of the mulch has been up around the peach tree, so there's no extra mulch other than just grasses falling on it that has been put here. Not as good as under the apricot tree, but it's still crumbly and it still seems damp. Not quite the life that's in under the apricot tree. The more trees in your system, the more the birds come and land and feed and drop their little bit of fertility to the system as well. So a fair amount of roots from the grass and quite a bit of life. Well, not exactly a scientific experiment, it does give me a bit of an idea of what's happening down the different ends. I think down this end with a lot more organic material being put on the surface, it's helping the whole system. It keeps it hydrated and gives plenty of food for the um, organisms. Also keeping these trees a bit uh, smaller can help get the sunlight in, get the moisture in and get more roots in the ground in um, the soil areas. As you can see under the tagasasti down the other end where it's really shaded the area and dried it out, there's not much life, there's no roots, there's no life in that soil underneath that tree. So it really has prompted me that um, maybe I need to do a bit more management down there just to help move it along. My whole swale needs management. I will be focusing a lot on the other end, but I do have to keep in mind uh, not cutting too much of the trees down. Coming into a hot, dry summer, I need those trees as shelter for my animals. But I'll be getting out with my brush cutter and cutting this down and using the grasses to mulch my smaller plants. And I'll be cutting down some of this tagasasti, but keeping that shading um, function in mind and getting that down on the ground also, just to make the most of any rains that come between now and summer. I just wanted to thank my viewer who actually requested to see the soil underneath my trees. But I think from the results, it does demonstrate that doing the chop and drop does help to improve the soil and that will help to improve the growth of our trees. I think the more that you can grow and chop and drop, of course the system's going to move along a lot quicker and I can only do so much here. So I'm trying but at least it sort of gives me incentive to really get in here and manage the system the best I can. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Thanks so much for watching and bye for now.